is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We're doing a battle report video for you guys today. We were actually at a GT. We went 3-0. We had a drop. Uh, personal reason, but we are going to talk about each game uh, this week. We got uh, Game 1 versus Thousand Suns, Game 2 versus Black Templar, and Game 3, we went into Chaos Demons. So this is going to be the uh, first game of the three-game uh, series. So if you guys are Patreons, appreciate you. Thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, if you guys are supporting the channel and you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com. It's a dollar a month. You get all these videos actually up ahead of time on patreon and we do monday night gaming uh sometimes tuesday night gamings that's only live stream only on patreon.com so we're trying to do that a lot of that more uh in 2024 and if you guys are getting into the competitive scene or you like my channel and you want to kind of talk about lists tactics ideas anything to get yourself better at the game of 40k you can head over and join the competitive dirtbag uh chant or thing on patreon.com and you get to message me one-on-one -on -one to go over all that stuff. Ask any of the guys over at patreon.com what they think of it uh, and just get their suggestions because I always get a lot of uh, comments by saying they're performing really well in tournaments way more than they would have done prior to joining the competitive dirtbags. So we're really trying to uh, grow Dirtbag Nation in 2024. We're so close to 10,000 subscribers, so if you guys want to hit that subscribe button to also support the channel, uh, we're about almost a thousand away, which is insane, uh, and we're about a hundred dollars away from the Patreon uh, thing where we're going to be doing a thousand dollar giveaway uh, of stuff to our Patreon members. Uh, anybody who's like a dollar can can join the fun, uh, but five, 10, 50, uh, 20, and 25 dollar Patreons, you get your own ticket in the wheel. Uh, we spin and then we give away uh, choice of the models that you want. We had a huge uh, giveaway once we hit 500. Uh, now the next tier is 1,000, and we're super close to that. Again, thank you so much for all my Patreons who are supporting the channel. So there's going to be uh, a list, which we're going to go over first, of what we ran. It's the Great Knight, Five Dread Knight, super fun list that has been doing really well in the tournament scene. So we're going to be going over that list. I'm going to save that clip just so it goes at the beginning of every single video. Uh, so if you guys have already seen it, fast forward to uh, the game, and then we'll go over picture by picture turn by turn what we did good how we can improve and hopefully the tactics that you guys see here well, you could implement it into the game and use it uh, to your own advantage so let's pull up this list okay so pretty standard list this is the gray knight build list that i made um when the Dread Knights became very, very good. Now, if you guys notice, there are three Tech Marines in this list. People ask, do you need three Tech Marines or are you uh, overkill with the Tech Marines? I honestly think with Grey Knights specifically, Tech Marines are super good because they could be used as secondary units later in the game. So they're gonna buff up your Dread Knights because hitting on twos is so much better than hitting on threes and it works uh, till the next turn. So even in the opponent's phase, you're still hitting on twos, which is really, really good in combat especially. So you basically buff one up, it can then move forward, shoot, charge, get charged back, uh, and then still hit on twos with everything. So they heal as well, and now with the new 10th edition, you can actually choose one model to be healed multiple times with different tech marines. So you might actually have two or three tech marines near a dread knight that's wounded, so that way next turn you just roll you know, one, two, or three D3 to heal that Dread Knight back up above its bracket. So really good tech with the Tech Marines. Again, they're 60 points. They're cheap. They're two up saves. Uh, they can be used for teleport assault later in the game. They basically auto advance six inches so they can keep up with the Dread Knights and they have loan up. So if you use your Dread Knights uh, as an oval, um, they can't deep strike right at, within nine inches of you. And then if the Tech Priest is three inches behind your Dread Knight, they can't get within that 12 inches to shoot your Tech Priest. Protect your te Tech Priest as much as possible, especially in a list like this where it's so few models, but so many characters. They also are characters, and if people take, uh, let's say uh, assassinate against you, it's it's a trap because you could basically hide on most of the game and if they get close, you could miss the Deimos away and their lone op. So they're really, really, really tough to kill. And again, it's, it's kind of, you want them to take assassinate because then they almost get maybe two kills with the assassinate. One of them might be a, a Grandmaster Dread Knight. So this is why we bring the three tech Marines. Uh, if I could bring four or five, I would, but we can only fit three. Uh, Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight, this is the one with the sigil. So in the video, you guys will see it's the cooler looking one. It's got a little dead demon on its base. Uh, it's a really cool model from Etsy. You guys can buy the upgrade kit if you guys are interested. But um, the Grandmaster Dread Knight, all of them have the same kit out. Demon Hammer, 
uh, side cannon and interceptor just because I want them to all be super easy, super easy to remember and everybody else, you know, remembers what they're going against. Uh, and this one has the sigil. So this one has the, if you target me, I get this shown away. Uh, it should be in every single list. If it's not on a Grandmaster, you can put it on a Grandmaster walking and use it as a 10-man Paladin brick or 10-man Terminator brick. So that way it's really hard to bog down. But this this list, I have Drago with my Terminator. So Drago can't bring sigil. So the next option is the Grandmaster Dread Knight with sigil. Then we have a basic Grandmaster Dread Knight. Now the regular Dread Knights are better, I think, at than regular Grandmaster Dread Knights. So the reason they can advance, fall back, shoot and charge, all that stuff, Grandmasters cannot. So that's the main difference is the grant the regular Dread Knights just have better abilities, I think, than the Grandmaster Dread Knights. Now Grandmaster Dread Knights are a little bit better in combat because you get the reroll hits, wounds, and damage against vehicles and monsters, but most of the time you're not gonna be facing that. I don't want to get my Dread Knights in combat unless unless they need to get into combat. You'll notice that and I'll say that a lot throughout these uh these next three videos. So, regular Grandmaster, we have Calder Drago, again, should be in almost every single Grey Knight list. He's just too good not to be uh, in a list, especially now with the new uh, upgrade is he can use it in Teleport Assault. It used to just be Deep Strike, but now Teleport Assault, so you can actually basically do this turn one if you go second. So you just pick up Drago and his squad, teleport him down, and then get a six-inch charge out of Teleport Assault turn one, which has been used... Uh, plenty of times by me so far then we got the 10-man terminator brick uh they have if i can bring a side cannon we're just gonna put a side cannon every single unit uh but banner a pop carry two side cannons uh 10-man because the 10-man you can get away with five man honestly if you go five man you could bring another grandmaster dread knight if you're crazy enough to run six but this one we only have five uh in my possession so we ran five with a 10-man uh, terminator brick one strike squad, super good. One of the best units in the game, uh, making objectives sticky. Uh, so scout move. <laughs> I don't know why they gave Grey Knights scout and sticky. Uh, having the sticky just makes it so good. You could bring two strike squads uh, instead of the the ten man, but you definitely have to have one. Like it's it's so good. Everybody has a strike squad. Then we got three Gen Knights, all kitted out the same way. Demon Hammer, Side Cannon, Incinerator. Uh, the Side Cannon bonus now with the Strength 10, EP2, Ignore Cover. Three damage is just brutal. It kills all the Terminators, Custodies, whatever has three wounds. It's going to murder, and then it actually is good at killing uh, lighter tanks, like Toughness 10 uh, and 9 tanks. It kills them no problem. Like, really easy, especially hitting on twos and winning on fours, if not threes. Then, of course, we have the Cal Assassin. She's just too good now to bring for Grey Knights. And then Kodias. We actually sell Calidus Assassins and Kodias if you guys are interested in those. Uh, we have the 3D printed models of these uh, two. They look almost exactly the same. Head over to Discord if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but again, Kodias we bring in case somebody has a way to get CP. If somebody gets a CP through an ability, on a 2+, plus Kodias also gets you a CP. And Grey Knights run through CP so fast. So having him in there, just because that had an extra 75 points, you can't really bring anything else for us. Um... Stern is 90, but uh, 75 points extra. And again, he has the ability to get us to CP. And if not, he's just there to walk in on turn three and, and do an action or something. So I put him in reserves every single time. Caladus starts on the table uh, with infiltrators and gets teleport assaulted. So you can basically have three Grey Knights teleport assault and then Caladus assassin it with her own ability getting teleport assault. So this is the list, guys. We have one, two, three four five six seven eight characters in this list the bring it down is only five vehicles so it's not that good for bring it down uh but the characters again if they pick assassinate against you you're hiding them very very well and you just be able to to, to teleport all all around the table and not get targeted so that is our list let's get into the first video uh and go over how we how we won all right cool so i saved that uh, list so you guys can again if you fast forward to this part that is the list it's the same every single time uh, but this is basically the first game of the three game GT we went into day one going 3-0 and then I had to drop sadly uh, something to do with my basement basement's fine it's better now so let's get into the stuff so this I just wanted to take a picture and, and showcase it this guy is one of the best painters in the area uh, he's on the team I think for the dumpster fire that that ran the event but he just paints so freaking well this is chaos super kitted out super customized um, 
just stands out so much with his army. I, I don't know if it's the best list. I didn't really take a, a huge look at it, but it just looks so freaking cool. He ran the crown just like uh, we did in our chaos, new chaos build. Uh, a bunch of cultists. Uh, it's just so freaking cool looking. And the color scheme, it's like a Zinchi color scheme. Look at Abaddon. It's so cool. So, just wanted to show that off. Oh, this is, um, looks like uh, Salamanders. Not Salamanders, fucking, um, wow. Uh, Alpharius. So, uh, Alpharius build. Alpha Legion. I am Alpharius. Alright, uh, so let's get into the video. Alright, so first game, we get Thousand Suns. Lucked out uh, playing Sean. I haven't played Sean in a while. Sean's a really good Thousand Suns player. He also plays Grey Knights, but hasn't really played Grey Knights too much in 10th edition. Uh, so we have the op opportunity to run uh, our counter, I would say, is Thousand Suns uh, into Grey Knight top list for tournaments so his list uh our mission is purge the foe which is one of my favorite missions if you kill shit you get points for it uh if you control more objectives you get points for it so it's a really cool mission especially to play at a, at a grand tournament it's our first mission of the day this is the terrain setup um everything just to go over real quick is ruins the first floor is line of sight blocking uh, and everything else is basically WYSIWYG. so if you can see kind of like through here um, as long as you're you know in the terrain you can see it the first floor down here is all line of sight blocking but second floor is open and each piece of terrain is its own piece of terrain so if you're in this piece of terrain you cannot see through this piece of terrain which i'm not sure if they play that the same way everywhere it just made sense to me just because the, everything's broken up uh in rectangles but this is the the terrain setup i don't know which mission for games workshop this terrain setup is but new 3d printed terrain uh provided from zach who is one of the uh, dumpster fire guys uh so it all looks really really cool uh, seems like that's where most people are going is a 3D printed terrain uh, with the rectangles. Uh, you could get the rectangle plexiglass uh, through Rexart Lasers, who's actually a sponsor in the description below. You get free shipping if you use the code DIRTBAGS. DIRTBAG. DIRTBAG or DIRTBAGS, but he'll give you the free shipping for that. So his list, if you guys are T-Sun players, we have... Uh, you know 10 terminators we have a bunch of characters in this list but you guys know them better than me we have a couple flamers to all five mans so five man uh rubrics five man flamers uh character here we have a solo character here or another five man over here we have the big beastie which extends the range magnus obviously a bunch of characters with uh more dudes back here really good painter by the way sean but all I think 15 guys back here, a couple flamers, a couple rubrics, um, a bunch of characters. There's a character in this list that can teleport. Uh, he's solo. He can just teleport all around. And he puts in reserves his um, terminators to come down uh, either rapid ingress or whatever. But this is a deployment, basically hiding everything so he doesn't get blown off the board turn one. And this is our deployment over here. So we, we put our... Uh, Terminators uh, within 14 of the back here. We put uh, Dread Knight, Dread Knight, Dread Knight, Dread Knight, Dread Knight. So these two are behind the cover over here uh, ne next to a Tech Marine. The Assassin is up here. The Grandmaster who has the sigil is this one, just so you guys remember. Uh, I will talk about how I fucked him up. Uh, we have a unit of strikes up here in case they have to go back uh, if I don't get turn one or forward if I do get turn one. And then another Grandmaster here and another re regular Dread there. We have a Tech Marine here, a Tech Marine there. So one Tech Marine within three of these two, one Tech Marine within three of these two, and one tech marine within three of these two so they're basically set up uh, so that way they can buff somebody turn one and i have an option of either a grandmaster or regular dread knight same thing over here two regular dread knights and a regular uh, dread knight grandmaster uh, then drago and the terminators are there i think in reserves we just had cody as walking on so cody is just kind of going to walk on in case i need him and that's it so that's the the terrain setup or the setup i get first turn with gray knight it's not the best for gray knight but it's workable because if you watch my how to deploy for turn one video you want to set up your deployment for turn one if you get especially missions like this which is investigate signals and extend battle lines really good uh, to get turn one if you prepared for it so for us we put these guys again within 14 so that way they can walk back and be our action monkeys so they basically are going to get teleported assault next turn anyway so we brought them back uh just to do 
do investigate signals with our like 600 point unit uh and then over here our assassin was also set up there to do investigate signals in case i got it turn one which we did so we prepared for it guys so watch that video if you haven't seen it but it's how to prepare for turn one secondaries then the strikes uh pre-gamed kept one guy in the objective here to make it uh, sticky for the command phase and then they moved up or advanced up to get onto this objective to control this to get extend battle lines so this back one is now sticky for us um and again if you get turn one you can scout move keep one of them sticky if you get two of them uh like you can basically get in range of two of them so i think if you got one up here one up there you could make both of it both of them sticky but in this case i wanted to be a little bit safe because if he's playing tactical and he gets you know take over an objective that you didn't have before he can take over that for an easy five points if he gets the center objective so instead we just made the bottom one sticky and we moved up and got on here so that way he has to go after my strikes um if he wants to take this or stop me from making that sticky next turn again having cover and two up save and armor contempt strat that we have um they're really hard to kill they're really hard to remove uh from marine bodies then everything else is basically waiting for next turn uh they all scoot up these guys can advance uh 14 and charge and shoot uh this guy can basically run around the building over this way if he wants to get a line of sight over there and then the grandmaster is he, he can only move eight so he's just gonna kind of scoot up and fight over the center if he can this one is going to be a teleport assault target i already know it same with these guys so i want to pick up these guys the grandmaster and probably this dread knight potentially over there so that is those are the options then his turn one uh he gets behind enemy lines and overwhelming force so really hard for him to get that turn one because he has to kill my strikes which is the only one on the objective uh and get behind enemy lines which is really hard to get uh on turn one especially if he doesn't have the movement like we do so instead he puts his guys out over here to get on this objective behind the ruin uh these guys are just waiting for a second phase all these guys move up on the bottom floor back here and everybody else is basically just waiting so he he's waiting to see what we do next turn to see if he wants to come out and kill shit so this was a very very boring slow turn one very fast we were like all right i guess i'm done he's like all right i guess i'm done too and then we go to turn two so turn one uh he gets behind me lines over rolling force which he got zero for uh but he's basically setting up for his terminators to come in and just commit fully on turn two so turn two uh we get engage in all fronts and behind enemy lines so for us we want to try and get behind his uh, enemy lines which is basically this diagonal over here so if i got my assassin which i did over here uh assassin up up in the corner got behind enemy lines which we was the only one to get behind enemy lines so it got me three points uh and then the second option was bringing up drago just to kind of come down over here and charge through this wall which I think I should have done instead, because then I would have been able to charge through, attack, consolidate, steal the home field objective, which this was one of the mistakes that I did in this game, was I committed Drago to really nothing. So I spent one CP, I brought Drago down within three inches on this objective to steal the objective, but it basically made me vulnerable because Drago doesn't have sigil, he's just there, and he's got a tank. All these shots coming in from T-Suns, which I haven't faced T-Suns in a long time. So they kill shit, by the way. If you're going into T-Suns, Sons, they have a lot of firepower that is unexpected uh so just watch out for that um grandmaster scooted up he got picked up dropped back down i want to try and kill this unit off the objective so i probably didn't even need to ha uh drop these guys within three i just would have shot him off the objective and then over here i prepared for next turn this guy moved back there the strike squad uh made this sticky and then moved off of it because did he keep it he did he kept overwhelming force so him killing models on objectives uh i took my models off of the objectives but still had sticky on them so i had sticky uh which he probably wasn't getting back here but i had sticky on this one sticky on this one took my guys off the objective it was like all right if you keep overwhelming force i'm just gonna not give you an option to kill guys on the objectives dread knight's still waiting back here this dread knight came up here to get line of sight onto uh the dude's in the ruin over here to just, just to try and take out some of his marines and that was our turn too so we finished off killing this little squad here and we killed like one or two guys back here but nothing nothing crazy turn two we did get engage in all fronts for five because we got one there 
here, here, and there. So we got five for engage in all fronts and then three for binding me line. So we are up. We have eight for purge of the foe because we killed somebody uh, and we had an objective. So we got eight for purge the foe and his turn, he also gets eight for purge the foe, but his turn, he kept overwhelming force and extend battle lines. So he actually kept both. No, he got rid of behind me lines and then he, he has uh, extend battle lines. So extend battle lines and overwhelming force, he gets for turn three. This is what he does, he commits. He deep strikes his uh, terminators, which I was questioning this because you can't land within a wall, but the TO rule that you basically play the terrain, even though the bottom floor is line of state blocking, you play the terrain as if it's actual terrain. So since you can actually fit your model in the window, even though it's blocked, you're able to, to do this. So I was like, all right. Tio says it, let's play it that way. So he's able to get his one guy towing onto the objective right here in the window, even though you can't land in a wall, but since it's technically not a wall, because it's the actual model, we played it this way for the rest of the game. So that was cool that he was actually able to fit right there. Uh, Sean was like, all right, I guess I'm going here. So he basically gets that uh, to get extend battle lines. Uh, yeah, extend battle lines for five and then overwhelming force. He has to kill a unit on an objective. He landed outside uh, nine inches. So if I would have had my strike just like two inches further over, he wouldn't have been able to land on the center objective. But I was like, hey, he's, he's giving me his Terminator squad. Let's just do it. Let's see what we can kill next turn. So he commits everything. Terminators in the center, uh, all right there. His guys moved out here. His other guys moved out here. His big beast moved out. Fucking uh, this guy ran ran up and over uh, over here these guys came out these guys like the entire army just fucking came out like rats from nowhere uh and he still got some guys in the back over here so time to kill everything so he kind of aims everything at my drago unit uh in this grandmaster back here everybody else is pretty much hidden this guy has a little bit of shots coming from over here but we made a lot of four up saves with this dread knight um the assassin i think just got obliterated by flamers flamers and assassins do not mix well so he killed my assassin pretty easily that got him purged the foe uh and then down here he kills all of my terminators besides one <laughs> so we we kept the apothecary obviously just so we can kind of make a dude uh on my turn uh but we'll still be able to control that i think i spent one cp to pass the auto uh, battle shock just so i don't have to chance that because that's actually getting me another more points uh and being able to move up and do actions and stuff so he kills all of my terminators besides drago and the apothecary uh my strikes are fine this guy only took two wounds uh, from all the shooting with the beasts and the flamers and psychic all that stuff over there. But Magnus and everybody just obliterated my Terminator squad. I think I used Armor Contempt. Um, and yeah, just, just died. <laughs> very, very well. So that was my mistake, is I should not have put that big ass unit just to come down and kill one fucking small, small five man unit. I should have uh, hid them. Like if I would have just tagged the Ruin right here and then chained them out behind this wall, uh, like all 10 of them, he wouldn't have been able to deep strike here. And if he would have shot my Terminators, I could have just removed the one guy on the objective, getting my guys out of line of sight. And then on my turn, make a guy onto the objective to then capture the, the uh, objective. So that was my mistake. That's what I learned from this is I committed Drago, who was supposed to be there to kill Magnus. I committed him to kill nothing. So make sure that you're committing your guys to kill equal amount of points and get you equal amount of points back. So that was my biggest mistake. They should have been tagged and chained up back here and just waited. Um, but now it's our turn three. So our turn three, we get 12 for controlling more points. We control this one, that one, and this one. Uh, so that was huge. And we got overwhelming force. So we have to kill uh, models on objectives and capture enemy outpost. So what I did was I picked up one of my Dread Knights and he left a big ass room right here on his on his uh, objective that I basically just dropped the Dread Knight uh, within three right onto his objective to try and steal it. Now, if I can kill uh, these two or three guys on the objective, I would have stolen it. But he did all the abilities uh, to block damage with that with that unit. So when I shot them, I didn't roll the best and he rolled decent. Uh, he left two guys on that objective, which I'm OPSEC for, he's OPSEC for. So I wasn't able to capture enemy outposts, which would have been fucking huge for us. 
uh, which is funny that I can even fit my Dread Knight back there to begin with. Um, but didn't get that. So I got zero <laughs> for secondaries, which is very uh, uncommon for Grey Knights. I wasn't able to kill uh, a unit off an objective because the only objective was this one, which would have got me 8 plus 5 or 8 plus 4 or whatever, 8 plus 3. That would have been eight, uh, 11 points. So I would have killed you know, that unit with my Dread Knight. Uh, and then if I can kill this Terminator Brick, that would have been another uh, overwhelming force. But what do we end up doing? We basically put everything into this Terminator Brick and one freaking lived. So only one Terminator was able to live, which didn't get me overwhelming force, which kind of sucked. Uh, and now these guys are stuck in combat. So strikes committed, uh, this guy committed, this guy moved up and committed, but um, I couldn't get his base into co uh, combat with this guy because of how he removed his guys. So I had to pile in and attack these guys instead over here. Um, there's the Dread Knight Hammer <laughs> behind the wall. So he's back there somewhere. Uh, and the Drago made a guy, scooted up, charged. He then attacked bad, killed that guy that I made. Uh, so Drago's in combat with this dude over here. And that was, uh, and then these guys basically all came down over here to shoot the shit out of the uh, Terminator squad over here with the two tech Marines back here. Cody is chilling on a backfield objective. Yeah. So turn his, his three, um, he killed, uh, I believe more than me. So he gets, uh, overwhelming force, which he kept again <laughs> and he got cleanse. So he has to cleanse the objectives and kill people on objectives. So he teleported his one guy over to here, uh, which got him, uh, be able to do cleanse on this objective. And I believe he cleansed over here with these guys. So these guys cleansed on that objective. He cleansed up there and then overwhelming force. He was able to kill my dread knight on this objective pretty easily and i don't know if he killed anybody else he must have because he got five points so who else was on an objective the strikes so yeah magnus came out to play so magnus uh flew up to here he kills the strikes pretty easily on the center objective so charges in kills the strikes kills my, my dude over here um and then cleanse twice so it was a really good turn for him he gets 12 for purge the foe five and five uh and then on our turn four we get eight uh which is you know standard for purge the foe we get deployed teleport homers and no prisoners so we have to try and deploy which all we have to do is get in his uh deployment zone which let's see who we got in his deployment zone. I think we had a tech Marine over here. <laughs> so tech Marine by himself hopped up, hopped down and basically deployed teleport homers in his uh, deployment zone for five. Like I said, tech Marines being able to come down uh, late game and do secondaries is, is why I like them so much in this list. And then we have to commit and kill Magnus. So Magnus is in the center right now. Um, we have the Dread Knight uh, moving it back this way to kill off these two guys on the top. Uh, we have our Grandmaster moving up to go after Magnus. The other Grandmaster is moving up. Uh, Drago came down over here, made another dude, and did his anti-demon 2 plus shots uh, into Magnus, which is pretty good. Um, and then we have a Tech Marine up here. I think that's it. Magnus then dies a lot easier than I thought. So uh, I think what, what made Drago live is these guys charge Drago. I think Drago is behind this wall. Or it might have been these guys. So basically Drago spent one CP to assassinate this guy, um, Heroic Challenge or whatever it's called, and we killed him. I think he rolled pretty bad like a four up save and he failed like two or three of them and then he dies re-rolls it dies again um and if this guy was still alive it would just would have been so much different for for his turn i think drago would have died this unit would have died he would have had a whole unit down here to do more uh, actions so drago killing that guy with whatever is just that that was clutch that was a huge turn in the game and then magnus dying to one two three dreads uh, and a charging dread and Drago was a lot easier to kill than I thought he doesn't have a minus one damage but he, he has ways to negate damage going into it um, and fucking thousand suns has a four of pain to pain to psychic weapons which is just insane so that's why it was so hard to kill most of these units throughout the game was because of that one strat which is basically made against gray knights so 
deployed teleport, we got five. No prisoners, we got five. Uh, and then his turn four, he picks up assassinate. So he has to try and kill a grandmaster, which is going to be really hard, uh, or Drago or a tech marine. So he can't really get his models into place to kill those specific characters. Like I said, if you can keep them hidden, it's going to be so hard to track my characters down and, and do anything uh, with them. Uh, so he gets two for secure no man's land because he controls one of the uh, sec uh, missions in no man's land and then zero for assassinate. He keeps assassinate. Uh, and on our turn five, we get 16 because we beat him on controlling a uh, second um, primary and then we beat him for killing units uh, for that. So we actually got 16, which is huge for the primary. Uh, and then we get assassinate, which there was a character that we, I think there's one more character right here, which I couldn't get to. Uh, and then bring it down, which he didn't have any more bring it down targets. I wasn't going to kill his beast up here. Like there just wasn't enough to get there to kill the beast up there. So his turn five, he has to commit. Uh, he gets eight for purge the foe. He gets assassinate for five. I think he kills the grandmaster. I think he just shoots and puts everything in the Grandmaster. And at that point, I didn't care. I was looking at the scores. Like, all right, so he gets five for assassinate. Um, and then defend Stronghold, he'll get three because I don't have and can't get anybody on his backfield objective. So at the end of the game, he's got uh, this unit back here with a character, the little beat or big beast guy. Um, and this is what I, what I was talking about. Drago in this unit right here. This should not have happened. So Drago... Um, moves up, charges, spends one CP, kills the character on the charge, uh, and then all he has left are these just basic guys uh, going into my Terminators and Drago, which he just he just couldn't do it. So that was that was crazy. Drago just charging in, just be like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and finish off this unit down here. Uh, yeah, so, end of the game. We have left this Dread Knight in the center, Grandmaster Dread Knight with Sigil, which never got fucking brocked. Um, tech Marine, Tech Marine, Tech Marine. All three Tech Marines are still alive by the end of the game, by the way. Uh, and Drago and three Terminators. So Terminators didn't die. Drago didn't die. Three Tech Marines didn't die. Cody didn't die. One Grandmaster with Sigil still alive. And the other Grandmaster, or the other Dread Knight, um, is still alive. So we still had a lot left over. This is our next matchup, if you guys are interested in that. But we still had a lot left over. Uh, the score is... 81 to 67 Grey Knights. So we had 44 out of 50 for primary. We had 27 out of 40 for secondary. We had two turns, guys, of zero secondary points, which should not happen with Grey Knights. That shouldn't have happened. Uh, that was just bad on my part. Um, again, I committed Drago and 10 Terminators for not really a lot. <laughs> they did survive to the end of the game because of just how you play them. But that shouldn't have happened uh we could have spent one cp to try and get another secondary but i think we could have got these secondaries i just didn't maybe on turn five i should have spent a cp to get another secondary maybe but yeah so that that was the difference and then he gets 32 out of 50 for primary uh 25 out of 40 for secondaries so the biggest thing was stopping his primary um and if you can either kill more than him or control more than him in this mission for Purge the Foe, that's the goal every single time. Is If you can do one of the two and get four more points than him every single turn, um, going from 12 to uh, keeping him at, F, at four or eight, keeping him at eight, and then, and then you getting 12 to 16 would be the goal for this mission every single time. And that comes down to not giving him easy targets to kill and you killing easy targets. So if you're like, all right, I have a unit of, you know, two crusaders over here or a 10 man brick of uh, shield chicks. I'm probably just gonna shoot those two crusaders, kill them, get my, you know, perch the foe target and then focus on those guys later on uh, when they're whittled down to, you know, three or four guys. That's the way to really focus on this mission specifically. But always a great game against Sean. He's a really good opponent, um, local guy in our meta, and also plays Grey Knight, so that's why I like him so much. But T-Suns, he's a really good T-Suns player to practice against uh, because he just runs them so well. And again, this is one of the first times I played T-Suns in a tournament where they have such good strategies against Grey Knights. If you guys are playing Grey Knights and going against T-Suns, such a 
a counteractive matchup for us because their strats are made to go against psychers and we are all psychers so it, it was just it was just brutal so that was the game guys hopefully you enjoyed it if you guys like it or like these types of videos leave it in the comments below head over to the discord if you guys want to join a really good uh positive discord meta uh and if you guys want to support the channel head over to patreon.com if you guys want coaching for the dirtbags head over to patreon.com um competitive dirtbags or grandmaster bags if you want specific armies played or specific videos made head over to patreon so that way you guys can give those suggestions and support the channel Channel. a lot of merch is gonna be coming up guys trust me it's coming we just moved to new house we got a little uh, kind of new setup I got to get the green screen somehow going with this setup I don't know how uh, but the room in the house downstairs is, is set up for gaming and streaming which is gonna be really cool moving forward in 2024 so moved to new house got a lot more room uh, it's gonna be really cool so appreciate it guys click on the subscription if you guys are still watching this and we'll see you if you guys are on patreon this will come out now if you guys aren't head over to patreon so you guys can see this ahead of time before everybody else appreciate it good luck and we'll see you in another video soon What's up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. If you guys are thinking about joining the Patreon page, we're going to go over each tier and how it's going to benefit you and what you're looking for specifically to get out of 40K in 10th edition coming up. There's a lot of stuff to go over. There's a lot of tactical videos up on the channel, which is for free. There's going to be a bunch of perks that you get specifically for being a part of the Dirtbag Nation Patreon page. Uh, so first off, we have the first tier, which is a dollar a month. You guys get first access to the videos over at patreon.com. You also get access to the Discord, which is specifically uh, a private link in the Discord that only Patreon members can see. So you guys will have first access to that. Also a benefit is Patreons uh, over the Dirtbag Nation get live streamed games on patreon.com streamed from YouTube, but there's only links specifically for the patreons.com. So not only do you get first access to these videos, you also get to see live stream games specifically only on patreon.com. The next tier is the Justicar. You guys get a shout out on every single video uh, on YouTube. You also get to support us a little bit more. You get first dibs uh, at voting on Discord, as well as you just kind of say, hey, I just want to be a uh, Justicar dirtbag and support you guys a little bit more than that dollar a month here. Uh, but you have get all the same access uh, as well as the um, different color over on the, uh, the Discord. So the third tier is the competitive dirtbag. Uh, this tier, you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is a lot of the dirtbags over on the Dirtbag Nation. They are able to send out messages one-on-one, -on -one, go over list ideas, tactics, anything you guys want to talk about. When I was getting into 40K or really any game in general, I always wanted to message the top players in the meta and just ask them questions. This $10 a month tier gets you that opportunity to message us one-on-one -on, -one on Discord, so that way we can actually coach you, give you our insights, suggestions, and that's gonna get you better at the 40K uh, 10th edition as a whole. So that tier alone, just $10 a month to have one-on-one -on -one coaching, one-on-one -on -one messages anytime throughout the month, that's gonna be a perfect tier for you guys. Even if you're brand new to the game, we go over a thousand point list, 1500 point list, 2000 point brand new starting list, team list, anything you guys need, that's what the competitive dirtbag tier is for. Uh, also, you get a little bit of uh, red number, uh, name tag on uh, Discord so people know that you're really serious get, about getting into the competitive scene. The Grand Master Dirtbags. This is the all in all $25 a month tier. You get one on one coaching, everything we said uh, prior to this, but you guys get to see me, Mike, any of the other dirtbags play your specific list that you want to see tested out live on one of our battle reports. You guys get to mention, suggest videos you guys want to see coming up on Patreon.com. So you guys get the above first tier benefit of everything that we do over at Dirtbag Nation. All the support mainly comes from you guys supporting us over here at Dirtbag Nation. And Grandmasters, I can't thank you enough, but for $25 a month, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching and anything you wanna see live on the tabletop. So you get, get to see a professional play uh, right in front of you. You guys get to kind of like see it one-on-one -on -one, and I'm actually making this specifically for you. There's also TTS events that you guys can uh, suggest. If you guys want to do a first one or two turn run through on TTS, we can actually log in and coach you one-on-one -on -one with that. If you guys see us at any GTs, uh, you guys get sp uh, special benefits, free dice, stuff like that. Anytime you purchase a merch thing on Discord, you guys get a free uh, limited edition dirtbag dice sent to you with every single purchase on top of that. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits coming up with the Grandmaster Dirtbag. Because I can't thank you enough for supporting us. 
definitely let me know which tier would be best for you if you go over to patreon.com and specifically go to a tier and make sure you don't forget to message me up on discord that's where we check every single day if you guys are really into getting into 10th edition 40k head over to the patreon join the competitor bag or the grandmaster message me as many times as you possibly want uh, and i'll coach you the best i possibly can uh, on any specific army that you guys play mainly our armies right now currently uh going into 2024 is going to be chaos space marines uh gray knights death guard uh and then we have uh custodies sisters and i think that's it going into the wings of 2024 but again any other army that you guys play, we have other coaches lined up for the dirtbags that are ready to take on that role of the competitive dirtbag page. So guys, really appreciate it. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for joining the Dirtbag Nation if you guys are already part of us. And we'll see you in another video soon.